Hello. We're going to continue our look at the book of Job and uh, do want to read a verse from chapter 2 and then move on and, and look at uh, uh, some things. It's another book that I don't have the greatest of understanding of the book of Job. I've got some basic, um, basic ideas and I'll share these with you. But in uh, chapter 2, to, to set the stage a little bit, uh, the Lord has allowed the devil to attack Job. First, he takes away his family, kills his children, takes away his, his wealth, and Job continues to honor God. And then uh, the devil is allowed to bring physical agony and pain and disease to Job. And, and, and then Job now, is, he's lost everything. He's in great physical pain. His wife said, uh, curse God and die. You know, God's done this to you and there's no reason. Here's something that Job says in chapter 2 and verse 10. He said to his wife, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. We need to stand on the promise of Romans 8, 28. God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Even when things happen to us that are bad, even when things happen to us that, that set us back, we can still trust the Lord that he's doing a work in our life. Job had no idea of the conversation that was going on between the Lord and the devil concerning Job. But God agreed that Job should be tested to prove his loyalty to God. And testing is something that, that's, well, we, we go through all kinds of tests all the time. When they make a new airplane, they have test pilots that test the airplane. And that's a job I wouldn't want to have. They take a plane 50,000 feet in the air and do all kinds of loop-de-loops and things to see if the plane will really hold up. Those are brave men to do that kind of testing. But yet we are tested. And I think God allows us, God maybe even causes us to have some tests. And even if we fail those tests, he's there to help us and teach us. One time there was a song, and I didn't like this song at all. Uh, some, some people got together and they were singing praises to the Lord and they started dancing around. And one of the songs is, God has never let me fail. God has never let me fail. And I didn't sing that song. I said, God not only has let me fail, he's pushed me into failure sometimes. He's caused me to fail because I need to be humbled. I need to learn from my mistakes. So, don't ever think that, oh, gee, I failed the test. No, no, just grab a hold of God, grab a hold of Jesus, ask for forgiveness, let him help you move forward from there. Okay, now one thing about Job that makes it difficult is he's got his comforters who come and say things, and some of the things they say is really good, but it's easy to take those verses out of context. We've got to look. Not everything the comforters say to him is from the Lord. Not everything the comforters say is something we need to embrace. We've got to look at this carefully. And we're going to move into now into chapter 5. I guess one thing I should say, one of the themes that I see of Job is that God is sovereign. God's in control. In spite of all the trouble that Job's going through, God as a father is looking over him and protecting him, allowing him to endure this test, knowing he's going to be stronger at the end, and knowing of his ultimate loyalty towards him. Okay, uh, let's look and see what this is. In Psalm chapter 5 and verse 17, now again, this is a man named Eliphaz that's saying this. I think it's a good saying... But in this case, he applies it wrong because these comforters are saying, Job, you did sin. What was your sin? Repent of your sin. And Job's saying, no, I didn't sin. I don't know why this is happening to me, but it's not because I sinned. He denied. Well, this is what uh, Elahaz says, Elah, Eliphaz. 
And this is kind of good. It can apply to me. It can apply to you. It didn't really apply to Job because Job did not fit the conditions. But here's what it says. Chapter 5, verse 17. Behold, how happy is the man whom God reproves. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. For he inflicts pain and gives release, relief. He wounds and his hands also heal. So that's, that's a good saying, but, he's, but he missed the point because Job is not sinned. He doesn't need to, um, you know, he hasn't been reproved by God. See, He's not being disciplined by the Almighty as far as punishment. He's being disciplined as far as strengthened. But anyway, that's, but that's a good one. We need to be aware that we can be happy when God reproves us when we have sinned. And uh, we don't despise his discipline. In fact, in Hebrews, it says that God love, he disciplines those whom he loves. So if you are receiving discipline from the Lord, rejoice. It means he loves you. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, in chapter 8 and verse 20, this was spoken by Bildad. And it says, but again, see, this is one of the comforters. But I think what he says is good. He said, God will not reject a man of integrity, nor will he support evildoers. So if you need to hold on to your integrity, sometimes we want to compromise in order to stay out of trouble. We compromise in order to be friendly. We compromise our integrity in order to make some money, perhaps. But, but God will not reject a man of integrity. Integrity is such an important part of the Christian life, to have Christian character and stand up for good, regardless of the pressure to compromise. Nor will he support evildoers. The evildoers of the world, you see them, they're millionaires and billionaires, and they've got all kinds of power, they've got all kinds of wealth, but ultimately, you know, that, they're not in a good spot, because God will not support the deeds of of the evildoers. Okay, that was spoken by Bill Dead. Now, let's move on. Uh, I'm just taking some verses here that, that impressed me. Job is now speaking in chapter 12 and in verse 4. And Job is saying, I'm a joke to my friends, the one who called on God and he answered them. The just and blameless man is a joke. Now think about that today. The just and blameless man is a joke. Oh, you Christians, oh, but why don't you do that? You're just a goody two shoes. Oh, you Christian, we just laugh at you guys because you're not into the things of the world. Come on and get with it. Uh, we're in the 21st century now. Uh, the Bible's an old book. It has no meaning for us today. And they laugh and they joke and mock God, they mock Christians, they mock the righteousness and holiness of God. It's a joke. But yet we stand and, and it's better to be laughed at by Jesus, by, by the world about Jesus, than to undergo the same kind of rejection that they will have. It's better to be rejected by the world than to be rejected by Jesus because we compromise and, and run away and fall away from him. So this is a... You know, Job saying, I'm a joke. Everybody's laughing at me. So what? Uh, they laughed and mocked Jesus himself. So let's not concern ourselves too much with that. Now, also down in verse 12, it says this, Wisdom is with aged men, with long life is understanding. And my thought with that is, wisdom belongs to the, to the aged people that have lived their life, that have had a long life, um, have a lot of knowledge, that have a lot of wisdom, a lot of understanding. And I heard this slogan, that when, when an elderly person dies, it's the same as if a library has burned down. All the resources that this, ha this person has, has now been lost because they're no longer here. So I know as a pastor, I used to really enjoy visiting elderly folks in the nursing homes or in their homes. And, and I've talked to a lot of people that were over 100 years old. I'd ask them two questions. One question, does your life seem long? You know, it's been around 100 years. That seems like a long time. 
Every single person said, no, it's flown by. Flown by. And, and I remember just yesterday, before I went to sleep, I was 17 years old, and now this morning I wake up and I'm 73. Boom, life goes by fast, folks. Those of you who are older, you know that. Those of you who are younger, don't put off doing good. Don't put off doing what you need to do because you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and you're in your 70s. Well, I'd ask the folks, does it seem like a long life? They said no. I'd also ask them, what would you do different? And they, asked, they answered in a different way, but every one of their answers could be put under the umbrella of this. What would you do different? I'm asking this to somebody over 100 years old, and they said, what I would do is risk more. I would try to risk. So ends the video. My phone's ringing. See you next time.